です。Hi. Uh, so, a few quick announcements. One,、uh, please don't bring in any food or drink.、We're、trying to keep this nice auditorium as nice as it is now.、Uh, right after this lecture, we have a group photo. I don't know exactly where, but we'll go down, and the people of the institute will direct us to where this is done.、Uh, There will be enough people to show those from outside the Hebrew University where、uh, lunch is. It's very close, the Wise、uh, cafeteria. And, and the final and most important、uh, announcement to uh, uh, serious coffee lovers we are supposed to,、uh, after lunch,、uh, there is、uh, going to be、uh, an espresso machine here. Brought,、uh, I, I don't know, but I hope the quality proves itself. So, right after lunch, you can come here and, and have、uh, an espresso or a cappuccino and, and so on. And、uh, without further delays,、uh, Peter, where is Peter? I'm here.、Oh, okay, so the next speaker is、uh, Peter Kivash, and he will speak about the existence of these arts.、Uh, well, thank you very much to the organizers for putting together this、uh, meeting and for inviting me to give these lectures.、Uh, yeah, so My title is The Existence of Designs. Uh, so I'll start by giving you a historical introduction to this subject. Uh, so uh, the general problem first came to the attention of, of、uh, the mathematical community when、uh, the Reverend Thomas Kirkman posed a puzzle in an in a, in a English、uh, journal,、uh, not a mathematical journal, more of a recreational journal. Um, the, the puzzle, so Kirkman's uh, uh, puzzle or problem of、uh, the schoolgirls.、Uh, so I'll phrase it in, in words, not exactly as, as he put it, but、uh, I'll paraphrase. So、uh, 1850. Uh, so the, so the, the problem is as follows. So、uh, 15 girls uh, walk uh, in five rows of three、um, for seven days. So, um, so uh, uh, for seven days. So,、uh, once each day.、Uh, and. Uh, they, the, the problem is to arrange them so that every pair walk together exactly once.、Uh, walk, sorry, walk in the same row.、Um, arrange so that every pair in the same row once. So, is, is, the, is the statement clear?、Um, So,、uh, so it's actually, as, a, as a, a first attempt at this problem, it's more convenient to, to change 15 to something a bit smaller. So,、uh, so let's change 15 to 9.、Uh, and, uh, and we'll change 7 to 4. Okay, so now I'm going to have seven,、uh, 15 girls, no, nine girls, nine girls. And they're going to walk in、uh, three rows of three、uh, for four days. Okay, so let's, let's see. So on the first, so day one,、uh, so maybe we have a row which is like this, a row like this, and a row like this. Okay,、um, so maybe on the second day, uh, uh, instead of walking, arranging them horizontally, I'll arrange them vertically. Yes. Because I have five rows. In each row, I see three pairs. Yes. 
this is five, five days, three and seven days. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, I have 15, 15 two stories. Two stories. <coughs> Sorry. Hope, yeah, I hope it works. Yeah. Uh, so on the second day, uh, this. Uh, on the third day, we'll do some. We'll do some diagonals. It's quite shocking to find such a mistake in the. <laughs> 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 no, still something doesn't count. So oh, okay. The first number is three times bigger than the second. No, no. Uh, I don't. This, uh, do some diagonals, uh, and then on day four, we'll do the diagonals in the other direction. Okay, so uh, so you can check that this this uh, satisfies. Uh, the conditions that uh, every pair is, is walked together exactly once. Okay, so uh, so it naturally raises the question of uh, so if I have n girls for which n is it possible to to make such an arrangement? Ah, that was yeah, not a good plan. So, given n girls, uh, which n is this possible? <coughs> but I, I hope it's clear what this this is. Um, so, okay. So, what are let's let's think of some necessary conditions on on n. Uh, any suggestions? That's, yeah, that's a good start, yeah. So three divides yeah, n. I'm not sure what is this. Ah, okay. We will, we, will, we will recover it as with the condition. <laughs> okay, yes. So. But this means rows of three triggers every time? Or? Yeah, so exactly. So rows, rows of three, and, uh, and I want that... Uh, uh, at the end of some number of days, uh, every pair walked, have walked in the same row exactly once. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can work, you can work out exactly. Um, uh, uh, so you, uh, you can say that, uh, uh, that, s that 3 has to divide uh, n choose 2. So uh, uh, n there n choose 2 pairs and each each row has 3. But actually that's implied by 3 divides n. So. Uh, any other condition? <coughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So this is a, a slightly more subtle one. Uh, uh, n odd. Um, so, so why is this? So, uh, think about one particular girl. Uh, <coughs> so, why? Uh, fix one girl. Uh, she is in n minus one pairs. Uh, and every time she walks uh, in a row of three, she walks uh, with with two other girls. Um, Uh, two others. So, of course, if you want to cover them exactly once, that means that n minus 1 is even, so n is odd. Okay, so uh, we can rephrase these c conditions as saying that n is equal to 3 mod 6. Okay, so, uh, so it's a theorem, actually, that, these, uh, that this is a, a sufficient condition. Uh, not, a, not an easy theorem, so it was only proved, uh, uh, so this, this problem is from the 19th century, but it was sold in the 20th century. Uh, so the theorem, 
So this is a, a theorem which was discovered by uh, a Chinese mathematician called Liu in the 60s and, and then rediscovered by Ray Chaudhary and, and Wilson in the 70s. So apparently, uh, because of Chinese politics, Liu's work was not known at the, at the time when they rediscovered this theorem. Uh, so, uh, so, that, so, so this... Uh, um, if n is congruent to 3 mod 6, <laughs> then um, if such an object, uh, which is no known as a Kirkman triple system, exists, then uh, exists. So put this in quotes because I didn't define it, but this is, this is what we've been talking about. Okay, so um, now the, there's, a, there's a more basic question here, which is uh, forget about arranging them um, so that uh, ev on every day uh, all of the girls walk. Just to, uh, imagine, uh, suppose I want to just choose, a trip, choose some collection of triples um, in, such, in such a way that every pair is, is covered exactly once. more basic <coughs> so uh, uh, so when can we choose a set uh, C of triples uh, on a set <coughs> X uh, so that every pair in X is in exactly one triple in T. You could have an equals one if you like, yes. So such, such an object is now called a Steiner triple system. Uh, although K Kirkman also invented this problem, so, and he was very angry at Steiner for not giving him credit for it. But he published, Kirkman published in obscure places, so it's, it's, not, it's quite believable that Steiner didn't know of his work. Okay, so necessary conditions again. Uh, okay, so uh, again, we have the condition that, that m must be odd. Uh, and we also have the condition, now we have the condition that 3 must divide n choose 2. So this is, um, this is the total number of pairs. And this is the uh, number of pairs in each triple. Uh, okay, so uh, we can rewrite these conditions. So, uh, i.e., uh, the, now it's another possibility that n is congruent to one mod six. So n is one or or three mod six. So uh, now, so it's it's Kirkman. Who, who studied this problem and showed that these conditions are sufficient. And this is from 1848, so this is even before he considered the problem about arranging them um, so that every day they all walk, walk together. So f at first he was interested in the problem of just choosing the, 
uh, the triples. Uh, so his theorem is yes. Uh, so yeah, I, actually, I forgot to say when I was talking about this. Maybe I already got rid of it, but this this picture I drew uh, at the start was is a, uh, um, is a is a is a is a picture from classical geometry, the affine plane of order three, and so uh, Pluca was uh, interested in in this in the uh, early nineteenth century uh, in. Uh, to do when working on the geometry of curves, he, he ran into this to, to something to do with the points of inflection of a cubic. And so he was led to ask, so when do these objects exist? And he had some conjecture which was wrong, and then he corrected it in a later work. And so he made the correct conjecture, but he didn't solve it. So, so then Kirk, it's Kirkman's uh, theorem answers his, his conjecture. Um, yeah, so um, if n is congruent to 1 or 3, 1 6, then there exists an STS, Steiner triple system, on uh, n points. Okay. Um, I suppose an, another thing to, to say about, about this subject was there was also uh, uh, the considerable interest in the uh, uh, early, twen early 20th century in the, the work of Fisher, a statistician. So if you, if you think of this, uh, if you think of uh, the set X as being uh, some experimental subject and the uh, set T as being some test that you're conducting, then you could think that this is an experiment where you test triples and uh, it's, it's fair to pairs. So every pair is tested exactly once. So it's another, another direction of interest <coughs> in this subject. So, uh, yes, yes. In fact, I uh, I put I put some on the exercise sheet for this course. Some explicit constructions of, of these. Okay, so right, how to how to generalize this uh, these kinds of questions? So um, uh, I'll, I'll take a I'll start with a direction which is maybe not the, the most obvious one. So you might think the most obvious di direction of generalization would be to re to replace triples and pairs by sets of size four and sets of size seven or or something. But so I'll come I will come back to that in a second. But first of all, I want to uh, generalize in a different direction. Um, I want to think about a a a Steiner triple system as being uh, a triangle decomposition of a complete graph. So, so we can think of uh, STS, Steiner triple system, as a triangle decomposition <coughs> of a complete graph. So, so whenever whenever I saw a, a triple, uh, maybe it would have been better to uh, draw it not not in the collinear fashion. Uh, I replace it by a, a graph triangle. Uh, so, maybe I, I draw you another Steiner triple system because I can't really talk about Steiner triple systems and not draw the Fano plane. Uh, So here's a here's a picture of a uh, the Fano plane. It's just, so you, if you could think of each of these lines in the circle as being a triple. So then it, uh, you can you can check that every pair of points is in exactly one triple. Uh, you could also think of each of these lines as representing a triangle. So there's a this is a this is an edge. This is an, an edge, and there's an edge I haven't drawn between these two points. And then you can see that every every pair is in exactly one. So it's a simple reformulation. Um, so then. Uh, so given this viewpoint, the natural generalization is, uh, when, is a, when does a graph have a triangle decomposition? Not necessarily a complete graph. Uh, 
according to the graph G, have a tri triangle C composition. Uh, just to make it clear, G is the edge disjoint union of triangles. Okay, so um, there are some, some necessary conditions, just like uh, so generalizing these conditions here. Uh, Okay, so um, every, every triangle covers three edges, so the total number of edges must be divisible by three. So three divides. Uh, I'll, write, I'll write the uh, mod G for the number of edges. Some people write mod G for the number of vertices, but I prefer this because I've, I identify a graph or a hypergraph with its set of edges. So if I write mod G, I'm thinking the size of the, of the edge set. Um, uh, and then what's the analog of this, the condition that M must be odd? Uh, well, if I take any particular vertex, um, I look at its degree, the number of edges containing it, that must be even. So, right, this is G of V. So uh, this is the degree of V uh, for, ev for every vertex V. Um, now, it would be convenient for me to have a, 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 some terminology. So I'll say that a, a graph is tridivisible if it satisfies these conditions. Okay, so is, is every tridivisible... Does every tridivisible graph have a triangle decomposition? No. no. An example? Sorry. Yes, okay, good. Um, so not every tridivisible visible <coughs> graph triangle decomposition, for example, take the sixth cycle. Okay, so we want to impose some conditions. Um, so one such theorem is a, uh, was proved by Gustafsson. Uh, 1991, uh, in his PhD thesis, um, he showed that uh, tridivisible graphs of large minimum degree have a triangle decomposition. So there exists some C bigger than zero such that if, um, if, uh, if G... Um, it's a graph on, uh, maybe I'll use some shorthand, so square brackets n as the numbers 1 to n, uh, with a uh, minimum degree uh, delta of g bigger than 1 minus cn, uh, say g is a uh, n G is tridivisible, then uh, G has a triangle <coughs> decomposition. Okay, so this is, you could think of this as a, a, an extension of the uh, 
uh, uh, not, not exactly a tension. It's, it's a result for large n, but it's, uh, you could think of the, uh, uh, the existence of Steiner triple systems as saying that complete graphs are tridivisible, and then this is an extension to graphs of uh, min large minimum degree. Um, no, I, so his his proof involves some randomness. Uh, so well, I mean, he doesn't phrase it as randomness; he phrases it as counting, ca counting arguments. But. Is there still a, a large gap between two and the one and the one? Ah, yeah, what what is what it what is the uh, you want to know what is the minimum the minimum degree? The, uh, yeah. No, no. So the conjecture is uh, of Nash Williams is. Uh, Nash Williams uh, sometime in the 70s I don't remember the, the year um, we replace uh, 1 minus C by 3 quarters uh, this this would be best possible so if you if you think of uh, if I take a, a complete bipartite graph uh, and then inside each part, I put some graph with uh, uh, maximum degree. Well, so let's say uh, n over four regular, or uh, so slightly n over four minus one regular, something. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and triangle free. I guess, yeah, okay, I guess these are complete bipartite graphs, so uh, let's do it like this. Uh, maybe I'll draw something here, uh, maybe this will be clearer. Yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. I, I confused myself by saying triangle three in the previous one. It doesn't matter. But anyway, this is an example. Um, um, it's, it's hard to cover the, these edges here. So uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are n squared over, about n squared over four edges here, uh, n squared over eight edges here. Um, so uh, I can, I, any triangle can cover at most two of these edges here. So if I uh, take away a small number of edges inside here, then you you won't be able to do it. Okay. All right. So, what uh, what other conditions might we want to impose other than the minimum degree? So, um, another thing which you might try is a pseudo randomness condition. Just to mention, so, so these are complete bipartite, and inside it's an almost complete graph? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so there is not enough supply of these internal edges to take care of the cross edges. That's the, that's the exactly, idea. yeah. Uh, the best you can do, the closest you can get is to take triangles which use two cross edges and one inside, but there aren't enough So, um, let's see the randomness. Okay, so there are, there are various ways of saying what it means for a graph to be pseudorandom. Um, the idea is you take some s deterministic property of a graph which is holds with high probability in a random graph. Um, so, the pro here the... Uh, okay, so let me give you a particular de definition. So, uh, okay, so... So let G be a graph <coughs> N, so N vertices. Uh, so the density is, uh, all right, little d of G, this is just the proportion of all pairs that are edges. So number of edges divided by N choose 2. 
Um, so what do I want? To, what am I going to say? I'm going to say the degree of every vertex is is close to being uh, what it should be. So if it was if it was random. So uh, so I'll say so I'll say g is uh, c typical if uh, so. Firstly, uh, for any vertex uh, v, I have the size, so the degree of, of v in G is uh, 1 plus or minus c times the density times the number of vertices. Okay, so when I write 1 plus or minus c, I'm, I mean some real number which is between 1 minus c and 1 plus c. Uh, so uh, if I choose, if I, if I imagine a random graph where edges have probability which is equal to the density, then the expected degree is the, uh, is the density times n, and so this is saying uh, that I'm within, within that uh, tolerance up to a constant factor. So this would hold by Chernoff bounds with, with high probability. Uh, and then secondly, I want the same kind of condition for any pair of vertices. So for any pair uv, uh, if I look at the common neighborhood, So this is uh, so. What would I what would I expect? Well, uh, for any other vertex x, uh, the probab if I chose edges randomly, the probability that it would be adjacent to u and v uh, would be uh, d of g squared. So I'll say it's it's roughly that one plus or minus c d of g squared times n. So d of g squared times n is the expected number of these vertices, and then again I'm having some error term which holds with high probability by Chernoff bounds. Uh, yeah, so just as a, an aside, um, uh, this, so this is one, one way. So you can, uh, of defining randomness, some, some of you will have seen the, uh, uh, the definition of, of uh, Semirani regularity, which is another uh, condition of uh, so, so, aside on there, uh, Semirani regularity. Uh, so we we, t we take so here's our here's our whole vertex set. Um, we take some subset, uh, not too small subset. <coughs> say bit bigger than epsilon n. And I want the number of edges in uh, to be uh, close to what it should be if it was random. So, uh, so this this would be a so for all you. So this would be an, another uh, property that holds with high probability in a random graph. Uh, and actually, so uh, typicality implies uh, Semirani regularity with a, some choice of c and epsilon. So, so typicality implies uh, Semirani, uh, but uh, not conversely. Uh, uh, essentially, the problem is uh, this is this is not a local condition. So uh, you can't from this condi condition on sets you can't really say anything about an individual vertex or or pair. So this this will hold for most vertices and pairs, but not for you can't guarantee it for everyone. Okay, so uh, so now I'm, I'm going to uh, I'll state a theorem, which is going to be the uh, the main topic of these these lectures. So it's a it's a case of a more general theorem, but I I'm going to choose this case because it's. Uh, uh, the proof is in this case is a bit simpler, so it illustrates the uh, uh, the general theorem. Uh, so uh, I think I have all the definitions I need. So uh, so uh, so roughly speaking, the theorem is that uh, uh, a typical tri-divisible graph has a triangle decomposition. So uh, so let me f formulate this more precisely. 
Um, okay, so some parameters. Um, so there ex exists some uh, C0 and, and N0. Uh, so that for all n bigger than n zero, um, um, if uh, let me say n uh, given uh, for all c which is let's say between n to the minus a tenth and c zero, um, if g is a uh, uh, try divisible uh, C-typical graph on N, and I want some density assumption with uh, so DG bigger than, I think, C to the 1 over 3,000 will work. The number is 3,000, of course, not being important. Uh, then G has triangle decomposition. Okay, so <coughs> is the statement clear? Makes makes sense. For large n, yeah. Yeah. right? Because uh, yeah, good, good, good point. That, so the complete graph is trivially uh, typical because uh, these, you can take these uh, c's to be uh, essentially zero, not order one, one over n. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I. Uh, I, I thought a little bit about how to formulate this in a nice way, and I thought this would, yeah, of course, n to the one tenth is not important here. <coughs> uh, the key thing here is, is, is that I want a density assumption. Um, and then this is the, this is the, the, uh, the value of C, which maybe it would have been clearer to say, it with the, dens say the density and then say the typicality that works. And this is a, it will not go all the way below it. Uh, yeah, I don't really know how how low it will go. I mean, this is this is this is. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly the limit of the proof, but it's sort of uh, you know roughly what what the proof gives. But uh, yeah, what do you mean? no, no, it has to be less than one. What what is the question? The c. Uh, so the 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 c is the c is is less than one. Um, so I mean, I. I I mean, the, the smaller you make C, the, the, the better your assumption is. So it's, yeah, so this formulation is a little strange. Really, the, re the reason for the lower bound in C, on, yeah, maybe, okay, now, I'm, now I think that maybe this is a bad way of writing. I should have said the dense, I should have written the density first, and then I should have told you what C is sufficient. Uh, because you see, the smaller you make C. Uh, C is like a probability of an edge. No, no, so uh, D, D of G is the density, is the probability of the edge. C is this approximation parameter. Uh, so the smaller that I make C, the stronger the assumption is. So what I should have really have written is that if the density of G is at least uh, n to the minus 1 over 30,000, uh, and, uh, and G is uh, <coughs> density to the 3,000 typical, then, then it helps. That, yeah. Sorry. So for what do you use would this be possible? How, how small? How small. Uh, so... Uh, well, you wouldn't expect it to be true for n to the minus a half uh, because uh, you can make uh, random graphs of that, that kind of density. But yeah, I mean, I don't really know like where what the, what the right threshold should be. So really, what, what, what is, if you're asking this question just for random graphs, what's the threshold? I don't for know. For GMP? So every mm -hmm. edge must be in a graph. Uh, yes, exactly. That's a necessary condition. So, uh, so, so if you go, every edge, yeah. maybe when every edge is in many then it 
it has a chance. I mean, this is uh, related to Voltec. Voltec. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that would be a good conjecture. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll come back. So as I said, this this theorem will be the main topic of these this, these lectures. But before I s start on the proof, I will, I'll talk around this a bit. So I'll, I'll tell you about the uh, uh, the generalization. Uh, uh, but actually, before I do that, I want to give you just some applications of this theorem. Um, so. Um, so one is, so, so suppose I just consider the usual random graph model. So uh, uh, I, want to, I want to look for ed edge disjoint triangles uh, in g n a half. Okay, so I, every edge appears with probability a half. How many edge disjoint triangles can you find with high probability? Um, so uh, now you won't expect to find a triangle decomposition because it, it's, it's not going to satisfy the divisibility conditions. Uh, so uh, uh, I look at the vertex set then with high probability about half of them will have odd degree uh, and half will have even degree. And of course, at, at the vertices of odd degree, you have to leave at least one edge uncovered because every triangle is going to cover two. So uh, I must leave at least one uncovered edge at each vertex of odd degree. Um, okay, so so uh, in the, in the uh, best case scenario, uh, there's a you leave a perfect matching uncovered on the odd vertices of odd degree. So that would be about n over four edges. The uncovered, so n over four plus little o n, let's say, uh, with high probability. Um, and actually, uh, it's a consequence of uh, of this theorem that uh, uh, you can achieve this. So uh, you can achieve this. Um, so I'll just give you. I'll give you a sketch. The uh, the details are on on the, the one of the exercises is to fill in the details. So uh, so so with high probability, uh, there is a perfect matching on a set of odd degrees. So delete this. Now you've you've made every every degree even. Um, and uh, now there's another divisibility condition. We want the number of edges uh, to be divisible by three. So but we can, uh, we can delete a couple of four cycles to change the uh, divisibility. If I delete a four cycle, then it uh, doesn't change the, the parity of the degrees, but it changes the divisibility of the number of edges mod three. So. Uh, so I can delete. Um, and it, about n over four edges to leave a graph which satisfies the divisibility condition, and it's it's easy to show that it also satisfies the typicality conditions with high probability. So I'm left with a graph that satisfies this theorem, and so it has a triangle decomposition. Another application is to the number of uh, Steiner triple systems. Uh, 
so, um, so Wilson conjectured in the So if I write uh, um, STSN for the number of tri sinus triple systems, uh, he conjectured that this has a, an approximation of the form uh, n over e squared plus little o n the n squared over 6. Uh, so how to, how to interpret this? Uh, n squared over 6 is about the number of triples that you're choosing. So the, the, uh, the, uh, the maximum number of choices you could have a triple on a pair is n, and then there's, so there's some constant factor, which if you uh, do some calculations, you can convince yourself is the, uh, the right scaling. Um, so uh, quite recently, uh, uh, Nati and uh, one of his students, Sir, Sir Luria, uh, proved uh, this, that this upper bound is correct. So, um, so the upper bound. Uh, and a corollary of this theorem is, is that the lower bound is correct. So, uh, and I, it's not a, not a difficult deduction, so I'll give you a, a sketch uh, now. Or well, I say it's not a difficult deduction, uh, given other result, some other results which have uh, been proved recently on, on the, uh, the triangle removal process. sketch. Um, so, um, so we use a uh, triangle removal process. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what this, uh, I should say, I'm thinking about a, a Steiner triple system as being a triangle decomposition of the complete graph on n vertices. What is the triangle removal process? Uh, you have a graph, you choose a uniformly random triangle, you delete it, and then you repeat. So, so, so repeatedly uh, delete edges of a uniformly random triangle. Bit of an informal statement, hopefully it's clear. I have the complete graph, I choose a random triangle, I remove it. Now I have some other graph, I choose a random triangle, I delete it, and so on. Um, so uh, now it's intuitively it's quite believable that uh, when you run this process with high probability, you maintain some pseudo randomness conditions. Um, and this is true, although it's, it's, it's uh, not easy to prove. So it's recently shown by, uh, uh, analyzed by Bowen, Fries, and Lubatsky. So, uh, so I'll, I'll state some, I won't state all of the. I'll just state what I need from their from their work here. So, uh, so, so it follows uh, from results of uh, Bowman, Fries, and Lubetsky uh, that. So I'm, I'm not, let's say, uh, they analyze this process all the way down to about n to the three halves edges. But I'm going to stop it uh, just when the number of edges is n to some power, which is slightly less than two. Uh, and then, then apply this, uh, this theorem. Uh, so, um, so, 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 so we'll stop uh, when 
about uh, n to the, I think, 2 minus 10 to the minus 6 would be a good choice. Edges remain. Um, so what do they, sh what do they sh show? That? So the, fi uh, the, the final graph is n to the minus a third typical. Uh, I could say so n to the minus t a tenth typical. I can apply this theorem. Um, and also, I, how many choices are, are there at each step? Um, the, the number of choices is very close to what it would be if the graph was random. Um, um, when uh, Pn choose two edges remain, um, so number of choices, so number of triangles, is, let's say, 1 plus or minus n to the minus 2 thirds, uh, p cubed n choose 3. Okay, so it, it resembles a random graph. Um, OK, so, so what am I going to do? I, um, so we run this process, and um, we end up with a graph to which this theorem can be applied. So we apply the theorem, and then we, uh, we take a triangle decomposition, put it all together, we have a Steiner triple system. So, so apply theorem, you get a Steiner triple system on it. Okay, so now we need to do some counting to see how many Steiner triple systems we, we constructed in this way. Uh, so now I'll count, I'll count the choices for the process, and then I'll figure out how many times I counted each, uh, each system, because I'm, I'm choosing triangles with some order. Actually, I'll count the. Uh, I'll take logs just to, for more convenient not notation. So I'll, I'll, let's calculate uh, log of the number of choices for the process. So log of number of choices for process. Um, okay. So um, what am I doing? I'm summing. So maybe, uh, so let's say um, m steps, some number m, i is 1 to m. Um, so I'm summing, well, I, so I've got it here. So log, log of this number, the number of triangles. So uh, say log of p cubed n choose 3 uh, plus or minus, let's say, uh, 2 n to the minus 2 thirds. Uh, and I should also throw in some factor for the fact that this that this uh, is a bound running with high probability, but this this is an exponentially small probability, so forget about that. Um, and now, okay, so I'll do some calculations for this. I'll, I won't go through the calculations. You can say that this p is actually just to make this p is pi. Right? P of i, yeah. So I say p of i is uh, n choose two minus uh, so one minus three i over. Um, okay, so you could so you can calculate or estimate this fairly easily. So uh, this is uh, so I'll write down what it gives. So there are there are about n squared over six steps. Um, I'll pull out the uh, the log of n choose three, and then I'll I'll write a I'll write I'll write a minus three, and they and let's say plus or minus plus order of let's say n to the minus. You know, 10 to the minus 7, so I'm, I won't worry too much what, exactly what that is. Where, where does this 3 come from? This is coming from the, the integral of log p. So the integral from of log p from 0 to 1 dp is equal to minus 1. So that's so I've got, I've got the th three lots of that. So that's where, where this is, minus 3 is coming from. Maybe I'll get rid of this now. Uh, okay, how many times did I count each Steiner triple system? So, so uh, for a fixed SDS, uh, 
log of the number of times counted. Uh, let's write let's write an upper bound on this. So it's at most uh, sum i of one to m uh, log pi of n choose two. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, so this, uh, what am I saying? N choose 2 over 3. Well, okay. Right, this is, you start with, with this many, and uh, uh, so what is this? This is uh, N squared over 6 uh, log n squared over 6, uh, minus 1. That's the same integral, but just with a power 1. Uh, so again, plus order n to the minus 10 to the minus 7. OK, so uh, so we're taking the difference. So, so therefore, log of s to the s n is at least <coughs> n squared over 6. Uh, what do I get? Uh, log n minus 2 plus order n to minus 10 to minus 10. Um, so uh, I seem to have lost the, the theorem. Okay, so I write it again. I, so therefore, STSN is, is at least um, n over e squared uh, plus little o n to the n squared over 7. OK. So now I want to uh, come back to the other direction of, of generalization that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so I've been talking a lot about triangles uh, and graphs, but uh, you could ask uh, this, this question um, covering sets in more generality. You could ask about covering sets of size 5 by sets of size 9, or you know, any numbers you like, really. So uh, designs. Um, so I'm going to have uh, various parameters, which will uh, so we generalize. Uh, so n n will stay n. N will be n is the number of points. Uh, the number three is going to become q. Number two, this is pairs. So uh, so I. Uh, so, uh, so triples uh, cover pairs. This is a, I'm going to call this R and one. So I'm covering pairs once. Um, this is going to become some lambda. So, uh, so let me write it. So uh, uh, a design <coughs> with uh, parameters. N Q R lambda is uh, maybe some terminology. It's, it's a, uh, a Q graph. Uh, so, uh, so set of uh, so uh, a set of uh, subsets each of size Q. Q graph uh, G. So uh, I'll say a bit more about hypergraphs in a second. But um, so this is a, uh, a hypergraph in which edges have size Q. Uh, Q graph G uh, such that uh, for any uh, R subset uh, E of uh, okay, Q graph G on uh, on N. That for any E subset of N of size R. Uh, there are exactly lambda edges of, of G that contain uh, F. So. Okay. 
Okay, so this is uh, generalization of, of the, uh, the problem. So the generalization of Steiner's problem um, is to decide uh, when do these exist. So this is a, a question that Steiner asked. Actually, he was interested in the case lambda as one, but later people asked it in greater general. So, um, so when do these exist? Uh, and so, yeah, so he asked it for lambda is equal to one. Uh, and so in the case lambda is one, so every, every set is uh, covered once, every set of size R is covered once, we talk about a Steiner system with, with parameters n, q, and r. Uh, and actually, this will be the, uh, uh, the main case, which I'll be, uh, well, actually, as I said, that I'll be talking about more specifically about uh, triangles, decomposition. <laughs> OK, um, Okay. so what are, what are the necessary conditions? So, so they're analogous to the ones which I mentioned for Steiner systems. You think of what, what the, uh, the generalization is. Um, and so the, I mean, one obvious condition is, so uh, when I choose a, a particular set of size Q, it covers some number of sets of size R. The total number that I have to cover must be a multiple of this. Uh, but then there are some other conditions which are based just as for the, the Steiner, for the tri Steiner tri triple system, question, we had a condition where we fixed a point, and then we, we just looked at all of the sets containing that point. So more generally, you could fit a, fix a set of any size, and you'll get a necessary condition. So, uh, so, it's a, so fix uh, any set size i, where say i is between 0 and r, r minus 1. Um, so look at the sets i. Look at the sets uh, containing. Let's, let's look at the R sets containing I. Okay, so uh, i so here's here's I, and I've got some some sets here, and then when I choose when I choose a set of size <coughs> Q, so okay, so this is this this one has size I. This one has size r, and then I choose some set of size q, which which covers it. Um, I'm going to cover some number of r sets containing i, and I, and what, whatever that number is, it has to divide the total number of sets that I need to cover. So so what are these things? Um, so this uh, when I choose a particular set, I cover q minus i, choose r minus i. So so uh, let's say this is q. So so number of r sets with R sets, maybe R, such that I is contained in R is contained in Q. This must divide, what is the total number? Uh, it's lambda M minus I choose R minus I. This is a total. Uh, with multiplicity. This would be this is maybe easier to see if you think about lambda as one first. You, that's the number of R sets you cover. But then, if I'm covering with, with multiplicity, then I just that's a multiplying factor. So the uh, uh, so the existence conjecture um, it's not known who formulated it. Uh, so maybe we can say folklore. Uh, 
Um, so for all uh, that this, so these conditions suffice when n is large given Q R and lambda. So exists n zero for all n given zero such that uh, Q minus I choose R minus I divides lambda n minus I choose R minus I. Zero less than equal to i less than equal to r minus one. Under such conditions, there exists a design with uh, parameters n q r and lambda. Um, I should say a bit about this n zero because uh, you remember in. Uh, uh, for the Kirkman's result on the sinus triple, triple system, it was just uh, the divisibility conditions suffice. There was no condition of, about n being large. Uh, so, um, so it is necessary uh, to assume n large. Um, so one example of this is uh, the problem of the existence of projective planes. So I, I showed you an example of a projective plane earlier. The Fano plane is a, a projective plane of order two. So the uh, meaning that the uh, 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 its lines have size three. Uh, it's called called order two because it's uh, it, it's a construction made over the field with two elements. And actually, the uh, the only known examples of projective well, correct the only, the only known orders of projective planes are. Um, Come are of our prime power order. They come from finite, and the, some constructions come from finite fields. Um, so, yeah, as, a, as an aside, there's a conjecture that these are the only uh, the only values for which it's possible. But okay, so what is a projective plane? So, a projective plane uh, of order k. Is a design with parameters uh, uh, k squared plus k plus one, k plus one, two, one. Okay, so it's you have k squared plus, plus k plus one vertices. Every set you choose has size k plus one, and every pair is covered once. So the uh, the Fano plane was was the example k is equal to two. It says every two points determine a unique line. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. But this, this is not part of the existence condition. No, no, because because you because you see that uh, n and k are dependent, right? So right, yeah. So this is this is actually the, the other end of the, the spectrum. You can't have designs in which uh, the size of, of the sets is more than square root of about square root of the uh, uh, the number of points. So. Sorry, uh, with with uh, constant multiplicity, you can if, the, if you allow large multiplicities. Hadamard matrices are examples. Um, okay, so uh, now the divisibility conditions are, are satisfied for any k. So, uh, so the divisibility um, holds for all k, uh, but. Uh, Example: There's, there are no projective planes of order six or ten. Um, so, uh, so six, uh, six is the f the first. So they, they do exist for prime powers. They so uh, so they always exist. Um, if K is a prime power. So six and ten are natural candidates to look at because they are numbers, less, less small numbers which are not prime powers. Um, so the, yeah, the, uh, the the prime powers is a classical construction of projected planes. Um, so from uh, order six, this is a consequence of the uh, the Brook Riser Chowlef theorem. Uh, 
Yeah, so the, this is a theorem which gives general conditions uh, for the existence of certain kinds of designs, and it's 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 based on quadratic forms, so it's it's uh, quite different to the linear conditions. Uh, and one consequence is if, if a projective plane exists uh, for some k, and k is congruent to one or two mod four, then k must be a sum of two squares, uh, and that's not not true of six. So it's uh, there's no projective plane of order six. Uh, now for ten, uh, ten is the sum of two squares, so the theorem says nothing. But there is it's known that there is no plane. This is discovered by an extensive computer search. Okay. Um, all right, so it's some history of the existence conjecture. So, Peter, so here the large n is not so large, only quadratic. Mm. Q. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how how large n should be. Uh, but there are no worse examples that make this n zero grow more substantially. Uh, I don't know any. There might, there might be, but I don't know. Any. So some history of uh, existence conjecture. Um, so, uh, so I mentioned Kirkman in 1848. So QR lambda is equal to 3, 2, 1. Um, so the next progress was by um, Hanani. Uh, 1960s. Uh, he didn't. He didn't state a conjecture. He asked the question: When do these exist? Uh, he didn't. He didn't. You know. So Steiner's question was about <coughs> general Q and R, and lambda is equal to one. Uh, apparently not. I mean, it's not. Steiner's question was uh, 1852. Uh, so, so, so isn't the question this time? I think so. Yeah, it's uh, so. I I think uh, the earliest reference I've seen to it is in, is in, a, in the book by uh, Hall on combinatorial theory in 1965, and he, he says it's not known who asked this question, but I assume it was around since then. Oh, then, yeah. Um, yeah, so Hanani um, solved the cases that, uh, uh, so Q and R could be uh, 4 and 2, uh, 5 and 2, or uh, 4 and 3. Um, so the next uh, in the 70s, there was a, a big breakthrough by Richard Wilson, uh, who showed that it's true whenever R is 2 uh, for any, any uh, Q and lambda. So this is about decom decompositions of graphs. Um, so, uh, see, a bit of time. Um, uh, around the, the same time, um, Wilson and independently uh, Graver and Jerkat proved a, a result, which I want to make a little digression on because it will come up later. Um. Um, so this is uh, an, an integra um, integral design. So I want to consider a certain uh, vector and matrix equation. It's going to be of the form uh, where this is an inclusion matrix. So um, 
I'll have uh, I'll have uh, sets of size R here, and I'll have sets of size Q here. And then the uh, if I have a set here E and a set F, then here I write the indicator. So one if E is contained in F and zero otherwise. Um, so now you can think of uh, a, uh, a design as a solution to this equation in which the entries of V is um, so NQR lambda design is the same as a, a zero one solution V. Because you think of the ones as, re as telling you which sets of size Q you're taking, and then this equation precisely says for every set of size R, there's exactly a lambda, uh, you've chosen exactly lambda sets containing it. Um, so then, natural to ask about other solutions, and so what they showed is that um, under these same divisibility conditions, there is an integral solution. The divisibility uh, there exists an integral solution. Okay. Um, what next? So um, next thing to mention is the work of Rodel, uh, nineteen eighty-five. Um, introduced this method, uh, famous method called uh, the nibble, which is now a very um, important tool in combinatorics. Uh, so, and this is a, uh, a random construction method which uh, gives an um, <coughs> almost solution to the problem. So we relax it in saying the problem, say instead of covering all of these sets of size R, let's try and cover almost all of them. So uh, let's, let's phrase it in terms of uh, decomposition. So, uh, so let's... Uh, so let's uh, KRN uh, be a complete R graph on N. So there are N vertices and every set of size R is an edge. Uh, so so his, his re result is, can you see if I write here or should I go to another board? I've been writing here anyway, so it's fine. OK. Um, so KRN. Um, has asymptotically uh, n choose r over q choose r edge disjoint krqs. Okay, so uh, as n tends to infinity, so so fixed fixed q and r, and n tends to infinity. Okay, so, uh, uh, so what is if I can think of a, a Steiner system with parameters n, q, r, uh, just just as I described the Steiner triple system as being a triangle decomposition of the complete graph K n, I can think of this as uh, objects as being a, a K r q decomposition of K r n. Um, now, if I had such an object, the number of K r qs would be this number here: n choose r over q choose r. N choose r is the total number of edges, and each K r q covers q choose r of them. So his, his theorem is saying you can find asymptotically that many. Um, actually, there's a, this, this uh, method has been greatly generalized. I'll, say, I'll state a more general version of it next time. I mentioned next. Uh, so tier link 1987 um, showed, constructed uh, the first uh, uh, infinite family in a certain sense. He showed there exists, so for all, uh, for all R, there exists design uh, with uh, Q is R plus 1. Uh, lambda is something, if I remember correctly, r plus 1 factorial to the 2r plus 1, uh, and congruence of lambda 
uh, armored lambda. The, the values I've written are not important. The significance of this theorem was uh, this for all r. So it was not previously known that there were non-trivial designs for all r. In fact, there weren't any any Steiner, there weren't designs known for r at least seven, and there weren't any Steiner systems known for r at least six. Um, um, next. So now, jumping to more recent work, uh, Kuperberg, uh, Lovett, and Pellet, I think 2013. Uh, so, so probabilistic constructions. Um, so of many kinds of combinatorial structures, not just designs. I believe we'll hear from Ron about this uh, later in the week. Uh, so, but uh, for designs, the uh, so it's uh, it's the, uh, the, the one assumption which is needed uh, is that uh, lambda has to grow. So it grows at something like uh, n over r to c r. So it's a uh, uh, it's better than uh, Tierling's bound, but it's it doesn't say anything about constant lambda. Uh, on that, there there is is complementary to ours in that uh, uh, q and r uh, can grow. Um, as even some polynomial like n to the epsilon, whereas uh, uh, we're always going to be thinking about q and r as fixed. Uh, and then more recently, I can men mention uh, uh, Ferber, Hart, Krivilevich, Sudikov. 2014, um, uh, you can find almost uh, Steiner systems in a different sense to this. You can choose uh, sets of size Q that, so that you cover every R set once or twice. Uh, I'll state it informally. Uh, choose Q sets to cover every R set once or twice. That's, yeah, exactly. So that's a trivial example. But this lambda is not that big. I mean, it's R plus 1 factorial. What is that over there? It doesn't depend on the end. It doesn't grow with the end. It does grow with the end. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how they compare. Ron can tell us later in the week. Okay, so um, so I've proved that the existence conjecture is true. Uh, and uh, the, the proof is, is via a more, more general result, which is uh, a generalization of the, the, re the results on triangle decompositions of typical tridivisible graphs that I mentioned earlier. So, um, so moreover, uh, so... So typical uh, KRQ, and I'll state some. I'll state something, and then I'll uh, give you some definitions. KRQ divisible dense uh, R graphs have KRQ decompositions. Okay, so uh, so what are these these terms? So let's take KRQ divisible because this is first. This is a so it's it's a uh, it's the same condition which I was talking about earlier in the uh, in the case of you can think of that as being the case of this this condition for com complete hypergraphs. You fix a set of sizes. I, I is some number between 
uh, 0, 9, minus 1. And then you look at all of the uh, edges, the uh, and then you say, well, each time I choose a clique, I know how many edges it covers. Uh, that, that must divide the total. So uh, uh, Q minus I, R minus, choose R minus I, divides uh, the size of the degree of E for all uh, e, uh, so, uh, say for all I between 0 and I minus 1 and the subset of N size I. And this, so this is the, uh, the number of <coughs> G such that E is contained in, in V, in F. Uh, okay, uh, what is typical? So it's uh, um, so uh, generalization of the uh, uh, the previous condition. So uh, CH typical. I'm going to have another parameter H here. Uh, so if I look at, so there exists some P such that for, for any uh, P1 up to uh, uh, ET uh, subset of N, the T is at most H such that the size of all of them are equal to uh, r minus 1. Uh, if I look at the size of the intersection, this is close to what it should be if it was random. Uh, so this is a, so g is, uh, g is on. On invertices. So uh, it's the same kind of idea as I talked about before. So it's I take some common neighborhoods. Now I'm taking neighborhoods of sets of size r minus 1, whereas in a graph it was sets of size 1. Uh, I ask, well, what for any vertex, the probability that it belongs in the neighborhood. If, if, if I was thinking about something random, the probability that it below, be, would belong to the common neighborhood would be p to the t. P to the, so p to t, t n is the expected number. This is something that holds with high probability, so you can think of this as a pseudo randomness condition. Um, and just to make sure that that says t is at most h, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so uh, I'm short on time, so maybe I won't write out the statement of the theorem, but the uh, it's uh, the uh, so the, the theorem is uh, so so corresponding. Generalization of the tri divisible typical okay. um, and a couple of uh, corollaries, which I, I won't state exactly, but just uh, informally. So uh, <coughs> Corollary. Um, so, so KRQ divisible R graphs of large minimum degree, large minus R minus one degree, have KRQ <coughs> decompositions. Uh, so, uh, so this is the uh, this is the generalization of the result of Gustafsson that I mentioned earlier. So he showed that tridivisible graphs of la large minimum degree have triangle decomposition. So the, the same is true in this generality. Uh, and another corollary is a, an estimate for the number of designs. Uh, uh, 
um, parameters NQR lambda um, if divisibility holds. Um, so some formula, um, see if I can remember it. Uh, it's like a, uh, and then n is n is lar large compared with q r and lambda. Looks like a, a lambda factorial to the minus one of the lambda uh, lambda over e to the uh, all right, let me have some, some parameters. All right, uh, capital Q is Q choose R, and capital N is N minus R choose Q minus R. Uh, lambda over E to the uh, Q minus 1, capital N plus little o n to the lambda q to the minus 1 and choose r. I think this is this is right. So this this would be the total number of sets that you would choose in a, in a design, and this is uh, the number of choices for each set, which you would expect to scale like capital N, and I think if I remember correctly, this is the scaling factor. Okay, so next, next time I'll go back to triangle decompositions and uh, start proving the theorem which I stated earlier. So thank you very much. Just to remind you that we now have a group photo and uh, go down, drink, lunch, drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs>